Welcome to the Salon Owners Collective podcast. Today on this episode, we are going to cover how to actually have a holiday, but without stress and worry that you're going to come back and everything has fallen apart while you are away. We're going to take you through our five-step framework, but on the podcast today with me is Joel. Hey, Joel, how's it going? Hey, Larissa, how are you? Pretty good, because actually I'm about to go on holiday. I'm uh, about to hop on a plane and go to Bali. Oh, congratulations. That's amazing. How are you feeling about leaving? Uh, I'm pretty excited, actually. Um, Haven't thought too much about leaving yet. I've just been thinking about arriving in Bali. Um, (laughs) But as a team, we're about to put our five-step framework for uh, when the cat's away so the mice can play framework. So I thought, hey, this is a really good conversation for us to have because I'm about to walk out the door and um, it's kind of handing over the keys to you guys. So um, should we talk about it? Let's talk about it. I think this is a great topic. We work with salon owners every day that in one way, shape or another, they want to go on holiday or they're nervous about going on holiday. There's all the things about going away and having a break, even if they're just taking a day off, right? So um, yeah, I'm excited to dive into it. Yeah, it's probably one of the biggest concerns um, when I meet with owners for the very first time and they're feeling stuck, um, feeling concerned about, um, well, ultimately not feeling like they can get away. And you said something really important to me the other day, which has kind of sparked this idea for this podcast is like, actually, what is it that we expect and feel before we go, go away on holiday? And it's not always what we think. And so maybe do you want to talk us through the three different uh, stages that you might be when it comes to getting away, trusting your team, walking out and not feeling like, you know, everything's going to burn to the ground by the time I get back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we kind of hear it all the time. Like one of our owners goes away and they come back and we're like, so how was it? And there's this real element of like surprise. It's like, oh my gosh, it actually, you know, the, as you said, the building hasn't burned down. The team actually worked pretty good without me. And so if we could say that's one of the ways in which it kind of rolls out is like you come back and you're feeling pretty surprised. Like, wow, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Then then the other kind of scenario is that you go away, you come back and you come back and you, you know, get back into the salon or you talk to the manager and you're like, I knew it. I knew it. I shouldn't have gone away. I shouldn't have gone away. It hasn't gone the way I knew it was going to end up like this. And there's probably an element less of being surprised now, but more of being like, you're proven right. You feel almost a little bit angry that you went away because you knew it wasn't going to turn out and work out the way that you wanted it to. I knew it. I knew it was going to be crap. Sales were down. Clients had complaints. People were sick, you know, turned up late. All of those things. All of the things. All of the things. And then the third kind of way that it pans out, at least from our experience anyway, is an owner goes away and while they're away, before they go away, while they're away, and even when they come back, there's this underlying sense of confidence in the culture, in the systems, that the productivity will stay relatively the same and that the enjoyment and satisfaction in the salon will be pretty much the same. It's perfect, basically. Um, so those are kind of like the three ways that it tends to work out, generally speaking, Russ. For sure. I remember um, the first time that I felt surprised when I had my salon that it actually was okay because there's a little bit of intrepidation, like will they be okay? And to my pleasant surprise, sales actually went up. Uh, nobody was sick. Everything went well because prior to that, I definitely had those experiences in the early days of my salon of like – being reinforced that actually it was all about me and that I was carrying everybody because I didn't trust my humans. Um, But I'm really pleased to say that when I hop on the plane on Sunday, Joel, I feel super confident, actually almost too confident because we almost forgot to put the five-step framework in place, Uh, but we're doing that tomorrow. Yes, yes, cannot wait. Awesome. So yeah, those are some of the reasons, uh, so sorry, some of the scenarios that end up playing out. And I think you're absolutely right that often especially if it's your first time going away or you haven't been away in a really long time, like going away, there's an element of risk to it and coming back and being surprised. Like can actually be a really bloody good thing. And then a reminder that, okay, cool. Now, as I move towards past angry, proven right, towards being more confident, 
how can I focus on culture and systems so that it continues to work out well? Because I want to have another holiday, right? For sure. I actually think we need more holidays, more white space is better for more clarity and more action. So more holidays, I say. So good. So why don't we go through the five-step framework? And uh, I thought we could share some of the steps because we're about to do it tomorrow. Um, and whatever stage you're in, would it be fair to say, angry, surprised, confident, we should still put these five steps in place. A hundred percent we should. And the, the reality is, is that someone might be listening to this and like you, Larissa, they're off to Bali this week. And so it's like, you do something instead of do nothing. Absolutely, 100%. So, yeah, we have a five-step framework. It's an acronym. So, METAL is our acronym. Can you say that, Joel? <laughs> METAL <Middle, laughs> middle is our acronym. Kind of sounds acronym. like it, but it's not. M-E-D-A-L. Like Olympics, gold medal. Yeah. We're like, you want to win the holiday? Like, think of it like that. So, M-E-D-A-L. Right. Well, let's start with what's what's M, Joel. What M is, is the M? So, so just before we get into this, like, this is really simple and really powerful. So, if you're looking for rocket science, it's not this. Okay. So, M is you got to meet with your manager, uh, and yeah, you, you have to meet with someone. And if you don't have a manager, you want to meet with the person that has the lowest tolerance for average mediocrity. You know, like you're a epic premium salon that delivers high service so who in your team has the lowest tolerance for crap that's the person you want to meet with and it's probably your manager but if you don't have one it's that person and uh you just want to meet them and you want to have a conversation maybe Rish, you can talk to some of the things that you might want to talk to them about well i actually think we need to set some clear goal like during the time that I away, I'm away, what is the goal for you? What is it that um, that we're hoping that you're going to achieve, to do, not do? Uh, it might be a sales goal. It might be a team goal. It might be a client-based goal. It might just be like, this is this is the goal. This is the purpose of me having this conversation with you. Um, and um, maybe there's space for a, a reward for that, for achieving the goal. Um you know, whatever that may be, um, I think it's nice to have a focus because it, it just gives purpose and permission to the person. Yeah, and whatever you do, don't say something like, so the goal is just make sure the place doesn't burn down because that's the wrong yeah. focus. <laughs> not that that <laughs> would happen. But it's like, is that how aspirational we are, that we just wanted to not go bad? Like, if you put the focus there, then there's a very high chance that the manager or this person won't aspire and elevate. And I think what you're talking about, Riss, absolutely does that. It's like, what's the goal? Yeah, because people can't achieve something that they don't know what it is. And so if you have if you have something in your mind that you expect, share the expectation, but turn it into a goal. Because I think too many people are let down by pe uh, others not living up to the expectation, but actually they never shared the expectation in the first place. Oh, so good. Okay, cool. So it's meet with the manager, your manager, your person that's kind of going to run the ship while you're away and share with them the vision, the goal, the, you know, the expectation. Yeah, awesome. totally. Okay, uh, what does E, M-E, what does E stand for? E stands for explore everything that could go wrong. Now, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's a really good kind of like headline to have in there because... The reality is, is that running a business operationally, like there's lots of spinning plates, like there's lots of things to consider. Um, and generally speaking, your team without you probably operationally deals with the day-to-day -day pretty well. And so if you can kind of, with this manager person, sit down and be like, what could go wrong? If you think about the last couple of years, what are the stuff that's caused you a lot of stress? What's the stuff that's caused you a lot of overwhelm? Like, it could happen. And if it does, would it be worth a half an hour coffee with your manager to talk through how you dealt with that? You know, like, that's probably a good conversation because if you're away in Bali on the beach, Riss, then you want the confidence that if shit hits the fan, I can deal with that or Greta can deal with that or Sophie can deal with yeah. that, yeah? So things like, you know, the, the daily operational systems, like what happens when someone's sick? What happens when a client is late? What happens when the team runs late? What happens on team meeting? Who's running the huddle? 
um, have all of those systems and just run through them. Like even if you have to run through it with your whole team, not just the manager, like just run through it and just remind people of like, what do we do? And then, um, then I would think about things like emergency things like, where do I find the plumber? Who's the landlord? Who's next of kin? Like, if you can't get hold of me, who do you get hold of? My girlfriend went on holiday recently. She spent three weeks in um, the US and she put me down as her lead person's contact. Like, if shit hits the fan, just call Larissa. It doesn't have to be, you know, the husband or the the mother, but just somebody, like, as the, as the reach out person. Um, and then... And then I think you're good. If it's clearly laid out and everybody's reminded of what to do, then you can walk away with confidence. If hypothetically you're like, you're walking out the door to Bali and it's like you don't have a lot of time to go through that, because that, that could be like a decent chunk chunk of time. A good question to ask the manager would be like, what's your biggest fear while I'm away? Because sometimes if they have the confidence to deal with the biggest thing, like I'm really nervous that um, I'm not going to be able to run the huddles while you're away the same way that you do them, for example. It's like, cool, let's spend our half an hour together getting you really confident in that. And then because I can deal with that, I can deal with everything else. Like, you know, what's the one thing sometimes can be an approach to dealing with all of the things. Love that. Good idea. All right, what's the D stand for, Joel? Yeah, cool. Awesome. So this kind of flows on quite nicely from explore everything that could go wrong is D represents decision-making criteria. So let's just say while you're away in Bali, Riss, something happens and one of us needs to make a decision, but historically you always make the decisions. Like, is there a framework or a way of thinking or your attitude, philosophy, value system, whatever, that helps you to make decisions that you could impart and share with me so that I don't have to ring you at one o'clock in the morning and say, hey, this has happened, what do I do? The, the only difference between me and you is that you've got a decision-making criteria in your head and I don't have that. So as the owner, is there a way in which you make decisions that could support your manager in being able to make that decision without even having to contact you? Hey, it's me, it's just me, and I'm quickly jumping in to interrupt and say, hey, thanks for listening to this episode. And I hope you're loving this episode. Now, let me ask you, do you ever feel like you've reached the top of the mountain and you just don't know what to do next? Like if you're a million dollar business and maybe you're about to reach it or maybe you're already there, but now you're feeling a bit lost because the strategies that got you there aren't going to get you to your next milestone. What got you here isn't going to get you there. Sometimes the things that we did just don't work anymore. But I have some powerful strategies just for you. The Salon Mastery Boardroom is designed for million dollar plus businesses and you'll learn how to take your salon to the next level whilst being surrounded by a community of other million dollar like-minded salon CEOs. Those CEOs are there to support and uplift you. So I'd like to invite you to join me for a complimentary million dollar strategy call. We'll discuss your business, your role in the business and how to explore how you can grow your team, your leadership team and develop the people so you can take the next step and reach that next milestone. All you need to do is click apply now in the show notes of this episode. It will take you through but a couple of quick questions then you can book a strategy call with me. All right, that's enough. Let's get back to the episode. For example, let's just say you're recruiting at the moment and uh, it's quite likely that you're going to need to recruit someone while you're away on your holiday. Uh, there's probably, you could boil it down to three criteria that if someone ticks those three criteria, you as the owner would go, yep, let's put them on a 90 day trial. Let's bring them in and get them started. And so what's that three criteria? Share that criteria with the manager. Do they have the skills? Do we like them? Can they increase the bar? You know, that's a really good start. It's a really good start. and then the only other thing is like once you give decision making criteria to people, just let people make a decision. And when you come back, you've got to have their back because people are going to make a different decision to you. And that's OK. There's actually not the point because there's like 12 ways to reach an outcome. Just to have their back and um, let them make a decision. Yeah. And I, I, I love that. It's actually part of the process of stepping back. So like you're in and you're on and you're behind the chair and you're in the room and you're next to the bed. 
And then as you become more, quote unquote, successful and you move closer towards freedom and profit, you start to step back from the room. You start to step back from the chair. And part of that stepping back is handing over things like what you're saying, Riz, decision making to people that are actually quite capable. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What is the A stand for? Okay, great. So uh, the A stands for affirm their character or affirm their leadership. Uh, affirm something about them that is consistent. And so if they're your manager, there's probably a very good reason why they're your manager. Maybe it's in their value system. Maybe they have a really high work ethic. Maybe they always go above and beyond. Maybe they have like really good tenacity or resilience. Like find the character trait that you know is a part of how they were brought up or professionally how they roll and reinforce that. Like specifically, like script wise, I'd be saying something like, um, if it was you, I'd say, hey, Larissa, like, I'm actually really confident as I walk out the door tomorrow because one of the things that you bring that is just one of the great reasons that I love working with you is that you're super resilient. And I know that no matter what happens, you'll work through it and you'll do your absolute best. Like, that's going to land. That's going to remind. That's going to reinforce. And it's probably the best damn thing you could say before <laughs> before you leave, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, and then just being prepared again to have their back, whatever that it is that they decide, it's okay. Like at the end of the day, you know, it's it's just here. Nothing is unoverkomable, <laughs> and so everything true. will be all right. This is true. <laughs> this is so so true. And here's the thing, right? Is no matter who it is, like like we're making this a lot about the manager. It's actually about your communication. But no matter what, there's always learnings and lessons afterwards. Like even if you do it well and you come back, oh, it actually went pretty well. If you're really being honest, there's things that you could evolve, tweak, align a little bit better so that when you do it again, it works out better for sure. So definitely make sure that you affirm their character. Yeah, I love that. That's really good um, because mistakes will happen, um, but it doesn't change them as a good person. All right, I've, I've got to say the last one, L is for let go. Um, do I try? Do I trust my team to step up to the challenge? Yes, I do, or no, I don't. Um, be aware, um, but at some point you just have to choose to let go. And the worst thing that you can do for you, for yourself, but also for your family, but also for your team, is to st try and meddle from afar. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the, often the challenge is that the very thing that gets us to the point of success we're currently experiencing is really high levels of control and certainty and having my hands on both on the steering wheel and gripping it really, really tight. And it's great because it's got you to this point. When you go on holiday, you can't keep holding onto the steering wheel. You gotta let go and get out of the car and get on the plane. And so do that mentally, physically, emotionally. Like do it in all the ways, like take a deep breath and just go, just go and let go. I think one of the hardest things about letting go is that like um, being needed and being kind of on that mouse wheel with a bit of, um, you'll know the word, Joel, not adrenaline, but mm, what's it called? Cortisol, was it? Cortisol is the one, whatever it is going on. There's some shit going on there. Um, like it's it's almost, it's addictive or it's a, it's a feeling that we get used to feeling. And so to let go and step away and have empty space and now having to, oh, should I actually have to talk to my husband? Or uh, now I have to actually control my children because they're not going to be on devices. Like that can feel scary. And I remember the first time um, I let go and actually I wasn't even on holiday, but I had handed over all the things, and I was no longer needed. Like I had true freedom and profit and I wasn't needed in my business anymore. That felt weird. What do you mean they're not ringing me and asking me 12 things all of the time? And now I've just got my own thoughts, empty space in my head. <laughs> um, so being being mindful of that, and I know that takes me about three days. Like for the first three days, I'll probably still be checking Slack and just being part of the conversation. And then by that time I'll be off. The challenge is when I get back, It'll take me about three days to get back into being on. <laughs> That's yeah, just the yeah. process. <laughs> I, and I, yeah, you're so right, I feel Like there is a process, and I feel like as we journey towards freedom, whatever that means for us, being in choice, having lots of money, whatever the thing is, lots of resource. Like part of that's the internal journey as well of knowing that it takes you three days to unplug and detach and and all of the things. 
Um, but I, I just want to really encourage anyone listening that is going on holiday that um, the L, letting go, like it might be one of the hardest parts of the whole process. And that's okay because like your staff members, we've all got work to do. We've all got things to aspire towards. And quite frankly, maybe your thing is just a bit more internal if you're listening right now to be able to work out and figure out how do I personally let go for the benefit of me and my family, but also for the benefit of my team? Yeah, totally. I guess the only other roadblock is when you actually don't have uh, the right team on board and you don't have high levels of trust. And that might be a, a scenario when you actually are like, you, you're likely to come back and go, I knew it. I knew it was going to be, you know, um, as terrible. And maybe there are some true challenges in uh, culture and, and that's a work on. So um, if you're not there yet, don't worry, it's a work towards um, it's just good to have, like, start the steps now and just recognize it, recognize there's some work to be done culturally, but the goal is to work towards being able to get away and actually truly disengage. I think that's a good measure of true freedom and profit. Yeah, yeah. I, I could not agree with you more that aside from the three scenarios and aside from the middle acronym is that whatever the case is, there's going to be work to do when you get back. And so that's great. That's why we're in business, yeah? Exactly. Well, I reckon that was a pretty good medal. Uh, we should get a gold medal for that. And um, I reckon it's, yeah, I reckon uh, it's probably time for me to go and hop on a plane, Joel. Yeah, I reckon, hey, Russ, you should have a great time while you're away and uh, let's medal up. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I'll be sitting on the beach in Fiji. Um, Joel and the crew, you got this. Like, I'm not even going to worry about it. Maybe for the first three days, and then I'll yeah, be, like, I'll be off. You. You're so not going to. Oh you. yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know why? You Did I just say Fiji? You, so you get through about Fiji because we're going to Fiji next year with all color mastery, right? And so, can I just throw? This, can I just say? Yeah. One of the cool things we just had our Wellington intensive uh, last month. And at that intensive, we released that next year we're going to Fiji. And like everyone's already booked. Everyone's already booked. And so when you think about those three scenarios, like I hope it goes well, coming back surprised. Oh, I knew it didn't go well. Like we've got a whole bunch of people that are in that third stage, which is epic, which is they feel really confident about booking a year out. I'm going to go to Fiji. I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to move the needle in my business. It's going to be so super valuable. And I know I'll come back to a team that continues to hold that bar of enjoyment and satisfaction and also High levels of productivity that's why you're thinking about fiji but you should have a great time in bali okay yes bali for now fiji later got it make sure i hop on the right plane <laughs> <laughs> all right i think that's a wrap ciao for now ciao